check. Hey, hey. Yeah, I got another explainer video, except I'm not the one that's going to be doing the explaining. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I didn't know it was so troublesome for you to have to sit through my 10 to 15 minute no, lectures. You, no, you know, I, 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 I love our explainers. They, they are fascinating and they are fun. And, okay. and this just this just mixes it up a little bit more. I'm what do you got? Up, well, I'll let you know, I'm not the only explainer out there. Just letting you know. But you are the explainer in chief. <laughs> 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 All right, I will take that title. Thank you very much. So we're, today we're going to talk about Osiris Rex. Oh. Osiris is a, is a, I bet it's an acronym, uh, but we're going to find out what it is and what it's trying to do. Uh, in fact, I think I know what it's trying to do. You know what it's going to do, Chuck? It's going to go to an asteroid. Right. Fine, we've done that before. Okay. Then it's going to collect a sample. Right. Fine, we've done that we before. Did that. But then it's going to bring it back. Uh-oh, wait like, a minute. Oh, 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 oh. Now, wait, do we? Well, oh, so you said asteroid, right. I was going to say, if if it was a comet, then we could wait for it to come back. Well, okay. Well, some asteroids are on their way straight towards us as well. That's true. So you know. That is okay. true. Okay. I don't well, like to think about them, though. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bring in our special expert guest, Lucy Lim. Lucy, welcome to Star Talk. Uh, happy to be here. Thank you so e much. Excellent. You're assistant project scientist for Osiris Rex, wow. research scientist at NASA's Goddard uh, Solar System Exploration Division. Sweet. And this is NASA Goddard in in Maryland. There's another NASA Goddard in New York, New York City, City that involves planetary atmospheres. But the larger NASA Goddard Space Flight Center is in Greenbelt, Maryland. And you formerly studied asteroids uh, on the Near Earth Asteroid Rendezvous mission, the NEAR mission. So you've been at this for a while. That's right, ever since I was writing my thesis as a, as a grad student. As, as a young graduate student. So, what, so, so tell me, where are you going and what are you bringing back and, and should, we, should you be allowed to do this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our mission, the Osiris Rex mission, um, is, Wait, is it an acronym? Does it, does it, it is for... an acronym, yes. Origins, Spectral Interpretation, Resource Identification, Security, Regolith Explorer. I think you need a few more letters there, Lucy. <laughs> <That's right>. Just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're really pushing that one. Wow. Right. It was. Our mission leadership was very proud of themselves when they realized they could make that spell like Egyptian mythology yeah. and dinosaurs, like, and mash them together. It was, okay, it, I am not ever going to re-recite what those letters mean. Okay, just so <laughs> you know. Okay, so um, so tell me, we, we've actually talked about asteroids and sample returns before. So what what is going to happen on this mission and why should we all pay attention? Yes, well, first and for foremost, this is a sample return mission. So it's NASA's most um, ambitious sample return mission since Apollo. Um, so a, a lot of people may not be aware that NASA's had a couple of other sample return missions. There was the Stardust mission and the Genesis mission, um, which both flew kind of in the early 2000s. Um, so it's not so. What, and those would, were those were samples from comets. Stardust was a sample from a comet. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and Genesis was a solar wind mission. Solar wind. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. But they didn't have to go down to the surface of anything and pick the samples up. So that's why that's what makes the Zyrus Rex a little more complicated than those two missions. Um, we oh, have so to, all they had to do was fly through the the, the 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 debris trail and just scoop it up and bring it back. Absolutely. Exactly right. So oh, okay. So, had... so that's nothing compared to what you're doing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are landing on an asteroid, getting stuff and cut. So where does Bruce Willis fit into all of this? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, we're not, yeah, we, we, we have, we have a kind of a scaled down, um, it's not quite a drill, it's got, but it's got air jets to get into the surface instead of, in, instead of like, you know, the, the whole oil rig type thing. Now, I, I can kind of understand why we might get a sample from a comet, because it's it's got this organic material, it might have water, it might, it's just, they seem kind of more interesting to me in my naive thinking than an asteroid. So what's, what are you getting on this asteroid that, that you're not getting anywhere else? Yeah, well, that's that does go to why we picked this exact asteroid. Um, so asteroids, space rocks are not the same, all, all the same as each other. Um, so when when you look at our, our meteorites, the space rocks that come 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 to us, they come to us for free. Exactly, yeah. which is totally <laughs> awesome. 
<laughs> we love them. Um, uh, you know, they, they, they come in several different types. Some of them are igneous rocks. Some of them are obviously never part of a melt. Um, and so some igneous of them... would be, it, it was in a volcano and was molten and then hardened. Yeah, a, a, okay. a volcano or, or an underground magma chamber, either one. Wait, 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 wait. What's the difference between lava and magma? Oh, magma is underground. Lava is after it's erupted on top. So you're changing the name of it just because of where it is? Um, pretty much, yeah. And there's okay, also just, just check this. <laughs> magma, <laughs> lava, and tephra, like from, from bottom to top, right? Like, so tephra is if it sprays out into the, you know, uh, um, and gets airborne. Wow, so airborne lava airborne rather than lava. flowing lava is tephra. Right. Yeah. Which, wow. by the way, is the, you never, ever want to meet tephra. No, that's true. That is that's, correct. You, you just, want to wait for that stuff to fall back down to the ground. Right. <laughs> don't invite Tefra yeah. to the party. You don't, you don't want to stand in the in, in the bleachers with a mitt trying to catch a world cool, trying Some to catch tephra. You do not. Okay. Right. That's, oh, thank that's you for this for this there. bit of vocabulary lesson. Yeah. I guess I, th I I initially I thought it was weird, but it's not that weird when um, a meteor is a rock falling through the atmosphere, and when it falls on the ground, it's a meteorite. Right, so I, I shouldn't complain about this. Yeah, it's yeah. geology, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right, so what do you? So what are you after? Yeah. So uh, uh, okay. So out out of out of um, the meteorites that are that did not you know that are did not count come out of a melt at any at any point, and we we know that because they have stuff in them that like you know if it had melted it would have like chemically reacted or gotten mixed together or separated apart like there there are things that you find together in these meteorites that that tell you that it's it's definitely not an igneous rock. So I guess what you're you're suggesting that whatever you bring back will be different from all other meteorites on earth. Um it will certainly be different from what from the majority, but about okay, so when a meteorite falls falls to earth, about 4 or 5% of the time you get something that we, that that we call carbonaceous that like there's carbon and organic compounds and stuff in it um, and so, you know, so it's about, from life's point of view it's interesting chemistry very interesting yeah. yeah and then a couple of percent of the time you get something that also has hydration in it mm. um, so there's a, even minerals that have water in their structure um, and more in general a greater variety and complexity of organic molecules so so you're using hydration in exactly the way cause medic people use the word hydration <laughs> okay right getting water in you <laughs> in you in you okay just, to, just that's to be right clear. they're in court you, you wouldn't you know it wouldn't look like it was wet if you looked at you know if you looked at one of these meteorites it would look like a nor or normal rock and um and but but, but the water molecules are, are embedded within the structure that's what you're saying correct okay. and, and you see that in earth rocks all the time like we have tons of rocks any you know anything that's a clay or if you if you're familiar with mica or biotite minerals, like some of the, they're pretty. So sometimes people like to do crafts and stuff with them. Or opal, like all of those things have water molecules like inside the rock. But that doesn't mean that you you could quench your thirst with one of them. Yeah, like, just squeeze without... squeeze the rock and exactly. drip, drip the water. <laughs> Believe me, I I've, I've tried many times drinking a glass of pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now so you land down. So so here we are on Earth a moving platform headed for an asteroid, which is itself moving, then it doesn't just land, right? Does, do you have an orbiter and then that deploys the lander? Yeah, so we're, we, our strategy, we call it touch and go. So we're only going to make contact with the asteroid for five seconds. Wow. So Ooh. we're going, yeah. So Ooh. land or, so um, proximity operations around an asteroid um, are a little bit different or, or, or coming down to touch an asteroid is a little it's a little bit different from coming down to touch something really big like the moon or the earth or mars you know we you may have heard seven minutes of terror coming you know coming screaming yeah, down yeah. through the martian atmosphere um because to, you have to, to, to do get that. to get the rover through the atmosphere right mm. yeah exactly because yeah. mars is a big planet with a you know enough gravity that you you come that you know you can't come in slowly you have to come in at you know by the time you you get you get there you've you've had a lot of acceleration you have to lose all that velocity whereas um you can match velocity with an asteroid and then still and the gravity is so low you can still come in slowly oh so you just sort of dip down and kiss it exactly oh. you are literally going to tap that asteroid 
Yes. So now and then me... we're going to blow it a raspberry. Yeah, exactly. Oh, to, to dust to, it up. To dust it. We are. Nice. <laughs> oh. Okay, and let then... me ask you this. Wait, 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 wait. So wait, you're going to dust it up and then you're going to get that dust? Yes. Oh, oh that's really brilliant. Okay. But it's a little scary because now here's what I'm thinking. From what I understand, Bennu is a Neo and it is yes. also inside of that little frame or the parameter where it under some circumstance could possibly hit Earth. Um, you guys kind of bumping into this, could I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, could you perhaps change the trajectory in any way that you might Yeah, so yeah, up... let's ask that, because Chuck used the, the, the abbreviation NEO, Near Earth Object. Right. Uh, so B Bennu is a Near Earth Asteroid, is that right? It absolutely is. Okay, so, ab oh, Chuck, it absolutely is. All right, now you're gonna kiss it. Could you kiss it and touch it and push it in the wrong orbit? Yeah. We, we did a lot of math. The te so the, te the team did a lot of math to make sure that, that wasn't going to happen. Mm. Okay. So, How confident what, are they? <laughs> I was going to say, what, Pretty darn what, confident. What, grades, what math grades did these people get into? Because <laughs> I want the guy who graduated at the top of his class. <laughs> you want that person's I math. I want that guy making the calculations. <laughs> yes. We, we <laughs> okay. All right, so wait. So now you collect it, and then you tell it to come back. And how do we get it back on Earth? What? How? Do, how does? Is it in the Pacific? Do you? How? Do, how do you recollect it? You have a net. <laughs> um, that would be pretty awesome if we could catch it in a net from a helicopter or something like that. Uh -huh. um, but no, it's going to come down in, in Utah, um, the Utah Test and Training Range, I think it's called. It's like a missile range. Damn, I love you guys. You just, you yes. know, let, let's go to an asteroid. Pick up, you know, blow it a raspberry. Pick up some sample, and then have it come back and land in Utah. <laughs> that's just that's amazing. That's yeah. just, that's a beautiful thing. And Utah's low population density, so low risk of smacking somebody well, on the head. <laughs> well, the landing ellipse doesn't have the entire state of Utah in it. So okay. it's a, they, they found some place that, that nobody lived because it's a missile range. Um, and <laughs> and they made sure that they, so it's going it's, to, you know. Oh, so I don't know you told Chuck, so now Chuck, it might trigger a missile launch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so all right. So then, then all of you, you folks who who care deeply about this mission, you so you rush to the capsule and you you parse out the, the molecules of, of of asteroid dust and you take it back to your lab. Yeah, it's going to Johnson Space Center first for um, cataloging and um, yeah, and and, and and preliminary analysis. And what about safety? Um, s safety of it from us or the other way around. I'm worried that you took a moment there because you didn't immediately say, oh, yeah, of course we're safe. Yeah, safety. <laughs> I'm talking about Both asteroid, of these topics. asteroid yeah. bugs coming to, yeah. there's a whole movie called The Andromeda Strain. That's true. All right, that is the whole, whole about that. So what is there any precautions that NASA is taking, or you are taking, before we sort of bring this thing into our environment or your lab? Yeah, so all, all of this material will have been from the top few centimeters of the surface of this the, this asteroid, um, and what that means so. is that it's been. I know. I'm I'm getting there. Don't You're worry. You're getting there. Okay. Um, space is full of radiation, radiation? Okay. cosmic rays. You know, energetic particles from distant super, supernovae. Stuff that is not good for life, right? Um, so if you're in the, you know, if you're in the top few centimeters in the asteroid surface, all that radiation is going to penetrate and get to you. So if, if, you know, you, you would have to be, you know, it's, it, it's going to be dead if it's, you know, if it's exposed to that environment for. for so what, what you're really saying is that you're counting on the sun doing your job for you. <laughs> your, your sterilization. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> okay. But wait, wait, but wait, and we got to actually bring this to a close. But the a question often when you blow a raspberry, the. Part of that is so you have access to layers that are not exactly on the surface, that might be a little more pristine. So often we seek layers that have not um, been assaulted by, uh, by the sun and, and high energy radiation. So you're gonna be content with just the surface layer that has been subjected to this kind of high radiation assault? We are, I mean, the, it's, 
Um, we do expect to find like a variety of, you know, what we call space weathering, which is the effect yeah, of yeah, exposure okay. to space mm -hmm. and space radi radiation. Um, and, you know, space weathering is a process that's scientifically interesting as, as well. But there, there should be plenty of, you know, whatever organic compounds are there. Does doing this put you in a position where, let's, for the next time, that you can go even further? Is that part of the mission as well? I think it really is, especially when we look at the interaction um, of the spacecraft with the surface, because there are a lot of unknowns, unknown unknowns there right now, like, you know, how, how strong is the surface? We have no idea. You know, how, yeah. how big a hole are the jets going to make in the surface? How many, you know, how, where are the boulders, like how far are those boulders going to fly? And, and you taking pictures the whole way so we can watch this happen? We are. Um, they won't be downlinked until probably until the following day for until after they confirm that the aliens have. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's what we're going for. I know you NASA people. <laughs> but guys, we got to uh, call it quits there. Uh, so uh -huh. listen, Lucy, good luck. Sometimes you need a little bit of that too. Uh -huh. And thanks for being on. Star All right. Talk. Thank you so much. It was delightful. excellent. Chuck, always good to That's have you, man. Such a pleasure. Yeah. Star Talk explainer video. Asteroid sample return. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up. Bye.